many occasions, I have fell victim to uncertainties about the relevance of my own existence. Now, with marvelous determination, I am able to assert that a noble cause for which extensive efforts I must allocate has arisen. Yet from the shameful circumstances of enslavement, irritation and resentment come to dominate my heart when I see how our southern black brothers and sisters are abused and humiliated like mundane possessions. It was a terrible time in North America. Economic and cultural forces contributed to see slaves as fundamental elements of the labor force and as individuals who benefited from the care and teachings of their masters. These controversial events influenced numerous citizens to rise and revolt. One of them was, in effect, Harriet Beecher Stowe. June 14, 1811 marked the beginning of a tenacious confrontation with the inhumane treatment of slaves in the South. On that day, a woman named Harriet Beecher Stowe was born in Litchfield, Connecticut. Her mother was Roxanne Foote, who died when Harriet was a kid, and her father was Lehman Beecher, a minister with abolitionist tendencies who made Harriet comfort to his ideals. Her education and encounters with other anti-slavery individuals, such as Calvin Elisto, who would later become her husband, also contributed to Harriet's first influences about the wrongs of slaveholders. However, it was a combination of the unfortunate death of her sick son Charles to cholera and her eventual visit to the slave state of Kentucky where she witnessed how colored minorities were incarcerated for no reason. Indeed, this touched her profoundly because she was able to connect all this to what had happened to her son. She saw how servant families were being affected. She saw how small kids were being separated from their mothers. All these unquestionably convinced Harriet about the need for fighting against the cruel institution of slavery. The endorsement of the Fugitive Slave Act in 1850 by the government, which sanctioned all assistance to runaway slaves, was another very, very important factor for Stowe's elaboration of both the virtues of African Americans and the evil roots of slavery based on skin color. She illustrated those ideas in her best-seller book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and further addressed the inner incorrectness in the slaveholders' defenses related to Christian doctrines and paternalism, which, it is important to say, made her feel uncomfortable, it made her feel irritated to a vast extent, I find so much affliction, so much distress in the fallacious manner in which so-called modern federalist attitudes harm Christianity. There is no reflection of Jesus' command to treat others as oneself, and those who claim slaves benefit from the institution are mistaken. The ultimate benefit will come from their freedom. Published as an edition of the National Era in 1852, Uncle Tom's Cabin sold more than 300,000 copies in its first months. The humanistic characterization of slaves in the novel served to increase tensions between the abolitionist North and the anti-evolutionist South, which would result in the eventual election of President Lincoln and the later Civil War outbreak in 1861. Lincoln was an abolitionist himself, and after about five years of war, he achieved the ratification of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. Such document stated that slavery could only be tolerated as retribution for criminal acts. Otherwise, it was totally forbidden in the United States of America and all its territories. Overall, the life of Harriet Beecher Stowe was devoted to be a brave activist of abolitionism. Her anti-slavery education and first-hand observations combined with the loss of her son and the enactment of the Fugitive Slave Act led her efforts to seize 
the misfortune of forced and abused colored laborers. She wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, a book that showed the true colors of enslavement to the world, and was one of the main causes of the Civil War as a result of it. Harriet Beecher Stowe contains extensive historical relevance because of that, and thanks to her we can breed considerable racial brotherhood and fellowship. Thank mm -hmm. you.